our veterans need your support. Foxfield Farm for a Recovery Mission is a not-for-profit organization that has been established to provide an equestrian groundwork training program for U.S. veterans with PTSD and related issues incurred through military service. This curriculum will be offered at absolutely no cost to any veteran participating in the program. This foundation will also incorporate the repurposing of rescue horses and locating new responsible owners. The synergy of the work invested by the veterans to aid the recovery of these horses is equitably therapeutic. Please go to our website to be a supporter, www.foxfieldrecoverymission.org. Thank you. For joining me today. Our venue today is the venerable Hartford Golf Club in West Hartford, Connecticut. This club was founded in 1896. The club is a private country club located in central Connecticut, just west of the state's capital. It is a premier club in the Hartford region, offering a rich tradition of sports, fine dining, and family-focused activities. The 30,000 square foot clubhouse sits on 256 acres of impeccably maintained grounds. And my guests today are Kathleen Fowler. She is a member of the Hartford Golf Club Board of Directors, and Joe Conagen, who is the head golf professional at Hartford Golf Club. It's a pleasure to be with you folks today. Nice to be here. And thank you for ordering the great weather. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect out there. I understand, Joe, you have a member guest today? We do. We have a one-day member guest out there now. We have uh, 120 men uh, out there trying to make a bunch of birdies. And you set, the, set them <laughs> off. Uh, well, 120, so now you have them starting off with different tees, is that right? Yeah, so it's a one-clock shotgun uh, on 18 holes. Okay. Though we have 27 holes. Uh, the other nine we reserve for member play. So it's nice to be able to have a tournament happen and still have nine holes available for our members as well. Yeah, well, thank you for taking the time for being of course. with us. I appreciate it. All right, so now, Kath Ann, give us just a little brief background. Obviously, uh, we know that you're, you, you've been here for a while at the club, but a little bit prior to that. That's right. Well, prior to that, I uh, started out after college as a banker mm -hmm. and retired, uh, retired from doing that in the mid-90s when our family moved from here in Hartford to the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. We lived in the London, London and environs for about six years. We moved back here husband and two daughters and I and came back to the golf club where mm -hmm. we've been members and uh, and I've been basically working on in addition to working on the board here I've been on the board of a number of organizations in the greater Hartford area and a couple of national boards so I've been doing a lot of volunteer work well that's great now Joe um, obviously you're as a golf professional give us your background I understand you started quite young I did, yeah. I was lucky to, to play at an early age, uh, turned professional when I was 19. Mm -hmm. uh, started professionally at the Country Club, rotated in Brookline, Massachusetts. Uh, I came here on January 1 of 2009 as a head golf professional, so just finishing my ninth year. Um, luckily, I just got married last December. Congratulations. Thank you. And, uh, we're and I, I got a little word. You're expecting, <laughs> are we? I am. I am. Yes, we're expecting great. our first child on November 3rd. Wonderful. Baby girl. Wonderful. So we're very excited. Well, that, well, that's terrific. Now, Joe, everybody has a reason for why they got into the particular career that they are. Who, who started you off in the golf lane? Yeah, my uncle got me started. Mm -hmm. um, by the time I was around 10 or 11, I took it pretty seriously. And then by the time I got to high school, I knew that this was a a world that I wanted to be in. I mm -hmm. enjoy the, everyone wants to come, they want to see you, uh, mm -hmm. versus going to like the dentist, you know, yes, everyone yeah, dreads yeah, going yeah. to the dentist, <laughs> That's true. where they want to come to the club, they want right. to have some fun, right. and uh, we try to create a rather comfortable atmosphere, and mm -hmm. it's just, it's a wonderful place to be, and uh, finish my ninth year, time goes by way too quickly, but yes. uh, excited to, to be here. Um, well, now let's talk a little bit about the uh, golf program. 
joke. Um, but you have a very wide range, diversified age group here, which I think is important to mention. Um, and tell us, you know, exactly how, what, what do you have going on, what activities, and, and you know, how, how the participation is encouraged. Sure. It was one of the, the best details of the club, and something that attracted me was how diverse the club is. You know, we have just under 700 golfing members and just over 1,000 total members mm. with 27 holes of golf. So mm -hmm. it's a very active facility um, mm -hmm. with activities for adults, juniors, Mm -hmm. new golfers, experienced golfers. So, you know, every day is different, which is what I love the most about it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have a, a tournament out here right now. We also have a junior camp going on at the same time mm -hmm. and still regular member play. So every day is full. Um, plus, I'm, I actually own the golf shop as well, which is wonderful and have great support from the, from the members here uh, there as well. But, you know, we have 10 junior camps per summer just for the children. Which how, how, what's the range? Uh, two weeks or? Uh, so every camp is about one week long. Okay. Ages from 8 to 17. Okay. And we do about 100 children take part in that camp. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have a summer camp that uh, the club runs as well, which is just over 250 juniors. Right. So in total, we're servicing a little over 350 juniors uh, per summer, which is it's a big deal for us. Now, is there an opportunity? I would say, obviously, you can't do all of this yourself. So do you have assistant assistant helpers and pros and so forth? Yes. How, how does that program uh, work? Very blessed. You know, I, uh, I came from an operation where you wanted to grow and learn and move on to become your own head professional. Mm -hmm. So I've taken that mantra and brought it here to Hartford Golf mm -hmm. Club. And we have five assistant professionals on staff. And, you know, their primary goal is to learn and grow and, and hopefully someday run their own operation so we try to give them the ability to run every piece of the operation whether it's a men's tournament women's event junior camp mm -hmm. um, even buying in the golf shop mm -hmm. we want them to be able to experience all parts sure. of the operation so when they leave they can do it all yeah now i'm, I'm just going to ask a question because i know one of my viewers will ask out there do you have girls and guys in the internship uh, we're happy to. Um, okay. You know, unfortunately, the the PJ of America. There's 29,000 yes. of us. Uh, yes. As you might imagine, there are more males than there are females. But we're certainly always open and, and looking for for talent. Period, male okay. or female. Okay. Well, now let's talk about some of the recreational things, Kathy. Um, I know that you have tennis and squash and so forth. T tell us about some of those opportunities for people if they become members and uh, the variety of, of options there. Absolutely, there is a very wide variety and literally there's something to do all year long here. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a, it, the facility is, uh, includes four international squash courts, six paddle tennis courts, or I should say actually platform tennis courts, mm -hmm. that's the correct, mm -hmm. correct name, nine recently resurfaced hard true tennis courts, Two swimming, three swimming pools because there's a baby pool, um, and four duck pin bowling mm -hmm. lanes. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. we also have a fully furnished, fully equipped fitness facility, and we we offer aerobics programs, everything from water aerobics, mm -hmm. uh, Pilates and bar mm -hmm. and yoga classes, a boot camp in the summertime. Oh, our, oh. our fitness pro does a boot camp. Uh, six, so, so this is what, uh, so cardio kind of stuff? Yeah, okay. and they're, outside, they're outside yeah. in the, oh, in the parking lot and behind the tennis courts and right. yeah, utilizing all the right. facilities. Yeah. So Yeah, I know that our conversation uh, that we had just prior to, to our taping here, that we talked about you have such an active group of older members too. Oh, that, yes. That uh, participate. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. I, I actually play platform tennis in the wintertime, and there is a group of men every hmm. single day, and I think the average age is maybe about 89. Wow. Um, that play for an hour and a half and mm -hmm. then have lunch. Mm -hmm. And uh, in speaking with the head of our uh, Cordia Worth, who's mm -hmm. the head of our Rackets program, she said, you know, the thing that she loves about the tennis, mm -hmm. the tennis in, in particular is, um, she said, you know, we'll have a, we'll have a court that's mm. full of three-year-olds just starting out yes, learning yeah. how to hit the little, yes. a little ball with a little baby racket. And then next to them, there will be, she yeah. said, I've got a regular group of, of gentlemen playing, uh, you know, who are average age of 89 playing. Right. 
there are a lot of older women that yes. play golf. Yes. We have a very active women's golf association, and um, and you know I'll play golf on a Saturday morning or Wednesday afternoon with women of all ages, mm -hmm. um, uh, all many well into their 80s, mm -hmm. and uh, so you see that you know people really are uh, they mm. really are engaged and, and active. There's yeah. a lot of women who will, uh, some of the older women have a bowling league. Oh, wow. Oh, that's great. Right. Well, well, see, I think the point here that we're trying to offer to our viewers is the fact that this is really a community here for the family. And while dad might be out on the golf course and he's doing his thing and mom's playing tennis and the children are at the pool, at the end of the day, the family is here together and that they can meet and have lunch or dinner or whatever it is. And I think that aspect is not always true of memberships and other things. If you belong to a tennis club, it's basically tennis. And if everybody's not interested in tennis, well, the family isn't going to stay and have lunch at the tennis club or whatever. So I think that this is key and important for us to emphasize that. Now, I know that there are other things, too, other than the sports thing, you have other games. Abs oh, absolutely. There's a whole range of social activities that one can get involved with. You mentioned you know, our dining facilities. Mm -hmm. We have all kinds of activities around that. We've got a very active entertainment committee who mm -hmm. comes up with great, whether it's wine dinners or uh, Oktoberfests or you know, all kinds of, mm -hmm. of things, and they, they can change from year to year. Uh, we also have a very active uh, ACBL, American Contract Bridge League, okay. approved duplicate bridge series that runs from September through the middle of June every okay. year. And a number of women will participate in that. And men, actually. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Traditionally, it was more women, but, mm -hmm. but we're getting men to do we're that growing. as well. We're right. growing. We're growing. Absolutely. <laughs> right. and, uh, and then there's a group of women and, who have organized Mahjong. Yes. And then our, uh, again, back to Cordia Worth, our head rackets pro, about probably about 10 or more years ago, she began organizing an art show mm -hmm. to showcase members' mm -hmm. art pieces. Mm -hmm. And anything, sculptures, uh, paintings, uh, sculpt, uh, photographs, uh, and she'll do that once a year in around the end of June. And uh, she clears out the tennis pro shop and then puts up a, a makes it into an art gallery mm -hmm. and it's it's been really really interesting to see who in our community come I mean we have a couple of a couple of men that I know quite well who are you know have financial backgrounds and no one had a clue but one of them yeah. has got a, 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 a quite a talent in sculpting and another one's a, a phenomenal photographer yeah. and then along with people who actually do uh, make their living at, at you know some kind of art mm -hmm. um, producing artworks mm -hmm. and uh, I think I think Cordia told it's me kind of entrepreneurial have, in a way is bring out the entrepreneurial it is people, it is yeah. and it's it's yet another aspect of kind of you know creating a community creating mm. um, interest around things that people do that you know don't necessarily have to be the re involve the recreational right. facilities that we have. Well, you spoke about the art show and I'm just going to have to mention this one of your of members, course. Jim Lyons. He yes. he's been a member for many many years um, and I I have to uh, be honest with the conversation in that uh, my mother uh, followed with my father the pro tour back in the 60s, my mother Sylvia Davis Patricelli, and she painted paintings of uh, many of the famous golfers, and one of them was Arnold Palmer. And Jim Lyons purchased two of the paintings of Arnold Palmer, and he has graciously donated to them to the club, and they are in, in one of the hallways of the club. And uh, that m money received from the donation, that purchase, uh, goes towards a scholarship that I sponsor for young people, for youth, in both West Hartford and happens to be in Granby, Connecticut. So I just wanted to make mention of that. And my mother's website, for anybody who'd like to see the rest of the Pro Golf Tour or any of the other paintings, is www.sylviadavisart.com. So, um, all right, let's, let's talk about some other things about opportunities for children um, there's, there's a summer camp in junior golf, and I, and I think we touched on this a little bit. But let me just ask you a question about this, Joe. You, you, you have a, a wide range of age uh, group here. What, what, what are some of the most interesting aspects of your job? 
You know, the interesting thing, as I think Mrs. Fowler alluded to, is really getting to know the member beyond just, you know, whether it's their tennis game or their golf game mm -hmm. and being able to be out there playing 18 holes and learning that Mrs. Fowler lived in the UK mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, is what board she's on. Yes. Uh, it's really that community, that family aspect that draws me to a, a private club facility. Yes. You, know, you really get to know people on a different level versus mm. just the, the simple salutation and, and hi bye. Mm. Um, you know, I said this is my ninth year. I was talking to a member and their child's now 13. Mm -hmm. And I had the revelation that I knew <laughs> this young man when he was four years old. Yes, you know? so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I went to him, I'm like, you know, I've known you since you were four. And right. he's like, that is a long time. <laughs> so him, I know that, yeah, yeah, Graham, I know, yeah. Bowl, you know, for you it's a weekend. <laughs> and, you know, I've known him for much of his life, which right. says one thing, I'm definitely getting older. There's no yes. doubt about that. Yeah. But it says how great of a place this is and to really spend time and to know the entire family, whether they play golf or not. You know, it's my, my desire to know yes. all 1,000 of our members. Yes. And uh, it's just an amazing place to see every day how they all can come and enjoy a piece of, of Hartford Golf I Club. Think when, I think when, whether it's the, the aspect of the recre other recreational things and you being involved in the board and so forth, or whether it's your responsibilities as a pro, um, you're teaching, you're socializing, you're encouraging, and what, what comes back is the reward here that you've actually contributed to people's lives, to the quality of their life. And sometimes you even get to know some people more than others, mm -hmm. or you get to know the children, and you've actually had the opportunity to impact their life in a quantifiable and qualifiable way. And I think that, that that's a real get back, if you will. You've given, and, but you get back from that. Don't you think, Joe? And when you see someone improve or get confidence because now they're hitting the ball better. You know, it's like that first lesson, and uh, he or she first hits that really good shot yes. and gets it up in the air yes. and there's this pure jubilation on <laughs> yeah, their face yeah, yeah. and it's a big high five yeah. or I mean I've had some aha moments that yeah. you've described where a, a junior may say Joe I remember five or six years ago you told me XYZ mm -hmm. and it's amazing how that you know uh, sticks with them yes. and I'm very conscious of that and to your point that's the, the special feelings mm. of breaking a hundred or breaking ninety or how to deal with a conflict, you mm. know, with a, with a team that we have of 20, 20 staff members. Mm -hmm. You know, we're giving them hopefully items that they can use beyond mm -hmm. working in the, in the Hartford Golf Club or in our outside operations, mm -hmm. something they can use in their, you know, once they graduate college and, and go into the real world. Yeah, and I, and I think, as you said, if you can help them to gain confidence in their game, that does roll over into other uh, parts of people's lives. Sure. They feel they have the ability to get better. If I can get better at this, I can get better at my job. I can get, I can get better grades at school or whatever. But I think also because you seem to enjoy such a family atmosphere here that a lot of times where families might not, might have conflicts, as all families do between parents and children and so forth, you can sometimes see the mending going on here because finally the son decides or the daughter decides to join her father. Maybe she's just going to carry his bag mm -hmm. in caddy form or maybe she's going to play with him, but you see some of that bridging. Don't you think that that's true? Oh, that, absolutely. That there's the opportunity because as we, as I discussed before, this opportunity to all be here together but separately and then to meet later. And I think that that's um, a very key aspect of what you have particularly here. Yes. It is, it, it is a private club, but it is certainly one that one can look into joining, and we will give that information um, uh, shortly. But there's another thing. You have a scholarship foundation going on. We well do, here. and sort of carrying on with the theme of the community here. The community here includes everybody, not, mm -hmm. not just the members, but the employees as well. And um, I think it was 1989 that mm -hmm. a group of members got together and decided to endow a, a scholarship fund. Mm -hmm. And so there's a separate 501c3 not-for-profit uh, company that's been set up. Mm -hmm. It has uh, a, uh, and, and there are members of the club who run that that scholarship fund mm -hmm. and every year they invite the employees and to apply for on their own behalf or on behalf of their children for uh, scholarship money to mm -hmm. uh, to further their their post high school education and uh, and every year this year I think six 
six young oh, people six. were That's, awarded wow. scholarships, and that money goes directly to their the institution that they're to which they're going to attend. They're going, yep, that they, they mm -hmm. attend, and uh, so it's so which is great because mm. it's it's not money that goes to them and therefore it's not taxed so it's almost getting double yes. the money yes you know it's not taxed. well that that's taxed. really an extension of the club because if the family's been a member here and then children do move on to obviously going to college and and um, going into their own careers and everything this will still be a tie to the club because they know that the club aided them and their pursuit, whatever right, that may be. Right. Well, remember, these are employees yes, yes, that are, that are yes, receiving these funds. Yes. And but that talk of going around is what it, un, the community understands what a giving group you exactly. are. Exactly. And, and, and I think exactly. that, because I think the, the, the atmosphere I get here is whoever works here, because you all work here, no matter what uh, the employees are, okay? Everybody who works here, it's a family. And, and, and it's a family that families that attend, there are families that run, help to run the club. Right. And, and I think one of the things I'd like to do is just talk a, briefly about your board. Now, the board, I know, um, there, it's actually kind of a dual question. The board is involved in a lot of renovations and so forth. Right. It, and you just completed some of that, did you not? Right. Well, we're constantly renovating. Okay. As I mentioned, the, mm. the hard true tennis courts were recently mm -hmm. resurfaced. I think. Within the last five years, we've also added air conditioning to the squash courts, resurfaced the paddle tennis, and uh, and redone the um, heating elements mm -hmm. for for those. Uh, we are about to embark, and I'll defer to this Joe on this. This is where my dual question a came huge in. Huge project. Yes. I yes. one of my responsibilities on the board is to work with our house committee, who's mm -hmm. embarked on a, a major redecoration project mm -hmm. of the more formal rooms mm -hmm. of the of the club and uh, and where you know that again it's it's a it's a constant you sure. know there's a constant need for obviously mm -hmm. capital improvements right now how many uh, holes do you have here currently now Joe we have 27 holes okay. which is uh, a blessing in itself you know yes. uh, when I worked at the country club we had 27 as well and we have 27 here and it's it's a blessing because you really have to say no to a member who's trying to play golf. Yes. Uh, like today, yes. we have an 18-hole event, but we still have nine holes available for, mm -hmm. for members to play, and it's just Yeah, that, I think that's amazing. important. Yeah. It really yeah. is, and uh, you know, kudos to the club to constantly improving the facility, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's pool, tennis, squash, paddle. Mm -hmm. um, in today's world, that's, that's pretty amazing to, mm -hmm. to be able to continue to do that over the last you know decade. So you're going to have renovation of the golf course, is that okay? We so, are. Oh, yeah, that's yes. a big deep <laughs> breath. Yes, I heard. Yes. It's very it's, exciting. Uh, very yeah. exciting. Um, as mentioned, much of the facility has already been updated. So we as golf have been waiting for that opportunity, right. and uh, that opportunity has come. Uh, we're going to redo every bunker on the golf course. Wow. So all 27 holes. You're going to make them bigger? Um, <laughs> Deeper? Some, no, a little easier. bit more. Uh, hopefully easier. easier. But uh, Bruce Hefner, our golf course architect, okay. will be here on site starting August 22nd. So okay. we're excited about that. And do you uh, replace the pins and everything? Yeah, and, well, again, with 27, we can yeah. close down to nine okay. and let he and his team work on that nine okay. uninterrupted and still have 18 holes available mm. for our members. So each time he'll move from one nine to the next, mm. we'll still have golf available, which is, again, amazing to have. Often under this circumstance, usually places just kind of close. Yes. So we're lucky to extend that golf season as long as we can through the fall, which is a beautiful time for us. But mm. uh, doing all the bunkers and many of our tees as well, primarily to ensure that the game is fun. Yes long term, right? Yes. So a lot of the tees are going to be shorter because okay. um, that's been a big push for the... What, what is par here, actually? Well, for our depending upon each uh, each nine is or each 18 holes is 71 or okay. 70, depending okay. upon which two nines you play. Okay, and what, what's the yardage, total yardage? Uh, from the back tees is a little over 6,600 yards. Okay. Uh, so again, we're actually looking on the other side and trying to make it more fun on the shorter side. Yes. Uh, there's been a big push by the USGA and PGA mm -hmm. of America to play it forward, mm -hmm. which means we want to extend the life of the game for that person who's 80, 85, mm -hmm. 90, mm -hmm. 95, uh, play a yardage that they're comfortable with. Yeah. And in order to do that, we recognize that new tees needed to be built. So mm -hmm. we're excited to do all new tees and, and new bunkers in one fall. So. Well, I, I, think it's, I think it's very exciting, all the programs that you have here. 
Um, again, I want to reaffirm the fact that um, the, 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 the quality of the club, the visual that I see, the personalities that I'm speaking to today is a very welcoming map. Wonderful. And so I'd, I'd like to thank you very much oh, for your well, thank, thank you. For you. Having it's been a pleasure. Okay. Thank you for coming and, over. And, appreciate you and, and what I want to give us. to my viewers is the opportunity for more information. If you're interested in joining the club, go to the website, www.hartfordgolfclub.org. And I'd like to say to my viewers to remind you that you can see all of our programs on, on www.ctvalleyviews.com. Thank you for joining me today in remembering I bring proof to the people.